By now you're probably starting to feel a little confused and as if we're trying to go in about four or five directions at the same time in MEC 217. And that really is because we are trying to go in four or five directions at the same time in MEC 217. This is a wide ranging course. It covers a lot of situations in practical applications where we want to measure real world data in products like cars and, and consumer products and anything basically that's got a display on it has got a microcontroller in it and some measurement equipment. So we need to understand about transducers, devices that will translate uh, uh, measurable quantities into typically voltage that we can measure, sensors which may be either a, a combination of transducers and some circuitry or they may be digital sensors and we have to put all of that together with microcontrollers because we need our measurement systems to be affordable so that we can build them into our products. At the same time we'd like to process that data and we'd like to process that data in real time so that we know the answers right away we don't want to get to them later and we're going to in this course we're testing those ideas in Python because Python's an easy scripting language to do a lot of very powerful math without too much code. But when it comes down to implementation, we really need to be able to implement them in C. Because the C language is the programming language that will wind up allowing us to run those microcontrollers. So we're learning not only about the physical stuff that goes along with measuring real world data, but also about the programming that we need to do to process that data in real time and focusing on two different programming systems. None of this data is any good unless we know how accurate it is. And we're going to be trying to estimate and control uncertainty. The smaller our uncertainty is, the better. And the better our estimate of that uncertainty, the better we'll know how reliable our measurements are. To understand that uncertainty, we have to do a little bit of statistics. And we're going to do that statistics in a very practical, hands-on way without a lot of theory. We need to understand the sources of that uncertainty. What causes different kinds of problems in measurements? What causes our measurements to be a little bit incorrect? And we need to know how all of those sources are going to combine together to have an effect on our overall measurement. And one of the things that's an interesting result of these statistics is that this combination very often isn't as bad as we thought it might be. Because the odds of everything going wrong at once are not as high as the odds of just one thing going wrong at a time. Finally, if we're going to use this measured real-world data with some processing to tell us what's going on with, uh, with other factors in our measurement, and we have a reasonable idea of what our uncertainty is about our measurements, then we should be able to predict how the systems that we're measuring are going to change with time. And to do that, we have to understand the measurement dynamics how quickly our measurement devices, our, our uh, transducers and sensors and our microcontroller can keep up with measuring what's going on. And we also need to be able to understand the system dynamics. How quickly our system is going to change. There's going to be a lot of F equals MA in there. Or conservation of energy governing how quickly temperatures will change. Things like that. And if we understand these measurement dynamics and these system dynamics, they're almost always going to wind up giving us time derivatives. And the resulting differential equations. Now you're taking an analytical partial differential equations course or sorry, an ordinary differential equations course. Some of you may be taking partial differential equations. However, most of those analytical solutions 
can't cover some of the nonlinearities and details that crop up in our real-world measurements with our real-world system dynamics. So we're going to use numerical solutions. And we're going to use some very simple seat-of-the-pants seat numerical solutions to get our results. So these are the four pillars that we're going to be working on in parallel all the way through MEC 217. And everything that we're doing, you should be able to see how it fits in under one of these. And we'll pull it together towards the end to look at some larger product systems and how to understand our measurements, we need to predict how our systems are changing with time, subject to uncertainty, having processed our data in real time so that we can actually make those predictions and figure out what's going on in our, our real world. So all of these are intertwined, but the biggest thing at the bottom of all of this is we're going to try to take all of this information, all of our different modeling and measurements, and we're going to try to draw well-founded conclusions. And those well-founded conclusions are what are going to tell us whether or not our product will work. Because ultimately, it's all about design. We're going to design and build real products in the real world. And our major design question Will it work? And ultimately, once we've done all of these tasks, we should be able to make a reasonable assessment on whether or not it will work. So when you're looking at MEC 217 and you're feeling like everything looks a little bit confusing, you might want to look back at this bigger picture and see how all of the small things that we're doing fit together to pull together to answer eventually the single most important question. We're thinking of a design. We've got some ideas about how we'll measure what's going on and process that data to tell us what that means in our product. Knowing how well we're succeeding in measuring and predicting what's going to happen if we execute some control on that project, on that product. So this is our biggest question. Will it work? And all of these little tools are going to help us answer that.